Hey, this is AP Macro, this is Unit 6, the Open Economy, International Trade and Finance. We've got subject at 6.2 exchange rates. First thing I want you to know about an exchange rate is it's just a price. That's right, all an exchange rate is, is a price. It's the price of a currency in terms of another currency. And that's what you need to know. Like, we can price dollars in terms of euros, and that's what we're going to do in this particular video. But of course, we can price any currency in terms of another currency. Now, technically, when we say what's an exchange rate, we might say it is the rate at which we're exchanging one currency for another. But what the heck is that? That is the price, right? So that's the big thing, guys. Exchange rates are prices just like prices on goods and services are prices, or interest rates are prices, or wages are prices. Guys, and again, exchange rates are prices just like all of those. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about the dollar market, okay? Because, hey, we associate prices with markets. So... Where do we see the exchange rate? We see it in our currency markets, right? Our foreign currency markets, sometimes you'll hear it that way, or you might hear Forex, right? Foreign exchange market. And guys, here I'm talking about the US dollar market, so that means I'm pricing dollars in terms of another currency, okay? Now what we really have here is gonna be a supply of dollars, okay? So we're supplying dollars, and since I'm doing this in terms of euros, guys, we're assuming that we're supplying dollars to get the euro. Now, we could also have a demand curve, and that would be the demand for dollars. That would be people with euros who want the dollar. But I'm not going to be focused on that because, again, I'm not doing the full exchange market right now. For this particular video, I'm just focused on exchange rates. Now, here's the thing, guys. The exchange rate basically gives you the international value of a currency, okay? And that's really important because that communicates the purchasing power of that currency. Right? So, hey, whatever the exchange rate is for the dollar, that determines the dollar's purchasing power. To fully understand that, imagine this. Imagine we've got a bottle of wine being sold in Europe. Now, of course, it's priced in euros. So we're going to say it's priced at 10 euros, okay? And I just want to take you through a range of just different exchange rates and then kind of show you how that's going to affect the quantity supplied of dollars to the exchange market. Imagine at first that the exchange rate was one euro for one dollar, okay? We call that parity. The situation where one euro gets you one dollar. Well, how much of that bottle of wine costs an American who's looking at that bottle of wine through the lens of the exchange market? That's the way I kind of think of this. Is, hey, they're looking at it through this lens of the exchange market. Guys, they see that bottle of wine not as 10 euros, but if this is the exchange rate as 10 dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right here, 10 dollars. Now we're going to say, hey, based on that price to an American, that horizontal distance right there, that is the quantity supplied of dollars that we're going to have here. And remember, why are they supplying the dollars? To go get that wine, right? We supply dollars to go do something in the international markets, whether it's international product market, buy a good or service, or international finance, financial markets, go buy a financial asset, right? So we're going to say that is the quantity supplied of dollars if the exchange rate is one euro for one dollar. Now let's imagine that the price of the dollar goes up. It appreciates, right? Now you need two euros to get one dollar. Not one euro to get a dollar, you need two euros to get a dollar. Hey guys, the dollar is more expensive. The price of dollars going up, the exchange rate is increasing, the dollar is appreciating. When that happens, now what does the Americans see that bottle of wine? What's, what's the price they see for that bottle of wine? Well, in this particular case, if that's the exchange rate, guys, that bottle of wine is now only going to cost $5. That's right. If the American supplies $5 to the exchange market, guys, that $5 is going to get them 10 euros, right? And with those 10 euros, they can buy the bottle of wine. So take a look at that. It went from $10 for that bottle to simply $5 just based on the exchange rate change. And look at this. The quantity supplied of dollars is increasing, right? So, as that wine becomes cheaper because the purchasing power of the dollar internationally is increasing, guys, we're now going to supply more. Not just to buy more wine, but guys, you've got to remember, there's all kinds of products over there in Europe that we might want, and they are all getting cheaper, right? Hey, let's now say that the exchange rate goes to 3 euros for one dollar. At 3 euros for one dollar, how much does that bottle of wine look like now to an American? Hey, that now it only costs $3.33. It's getting cheaper, right? This stuff is getting cheaper. These goods and services are getting che cheaper as the dollar appreciates, as the international purchasing power of the dollar is increasing. And that's what happens when the dollar appreciates. 
Now, let's say that the, that the exchange rate went to 4 euros for $1. Once again, the dollar is appreciating even more. What does that bottle of wine look like to an American now? $2.50. Notice, continuing, as that dollar appreciates, how that, those goods and services keep on getting cheaper. And then let's say right, right up here that now the dollar is, well, 95 euros for $1. The dollar has appreciated even more. How much would that bottle of wine cost now to an American? $2. And guys, there's a very important takeaway, guys. Here's the thing. As the dollar appreciates, right, as it appreciates, those goods and services abroad are becoming cheaper. And so what does that mean? It means imports are going to go up, and that's very important. As that dollar appreciates, we're going to buy more imports, right? All that stuff internationally is now becoming cheaper to us. And, hey, we're going to sell less exports. Now, that might, for some people, I might go, oh my god, this is really bad. Well, it's good and bad. Now, why I say bad is, hey, some people hear less exports, that's hurting us. And it does. That is not great for our companies who are selling their goods and services abroad. For our companies in the United States who are selling a lot of exports, they don't actually like the dollar appreciating too much because that means they're going to sell less of their stuff. But I got to tell you, as somebody who buys imports all the time, right, all kinds of things in my life are being imported in, when that dollar appreciates, I kind of like the fact that all that stuff is cheaper to me. And so that's a big takeaway, too, that when we think about exchange rates, I don't want you to think that a dollar appreciating is a good thing or a bad thing. I want you to think that some people are benefiting from it appreciating and some people are being hurt, okay? Who's benefiting from it appreciating? Again, consumers who are buying international goods and services. And businesses who buy their inputs to production from abroad are also benefiting. But as it appreciates, again, those export-oriented industries in the United States, they're actually going to be hurt. And when the dollar depreciates, okay, exports will go up and imports will go down. So you can kind of see, hey, those export-oriented industries kind of like that dollar depreciating. They're going to be able to sell more of their stuff. But again, those businesses who buy their inputs from abroad, hey, those inputs are now going to be more expensive if the dollar depreciates. And also as a consumer, if the dollar depreciates, my international purchasing power is going down. So again, dollar appreciating or depreciating, not good or bad, it really depends on what shoes you're in, okay? Are you a consumer? Are you an exported, exported, exported export-oriented industry, it's not that hard to say, right? Export-oriented industry, or are you buying a lot of your inputs from abroad? Those are the shoes we want to think about when we think about the dollar appreciating or depreciating. So as we end this video, again, guys, the big takeaway, exchange rates are just a price. Guys, they're the price of the dollar, and they're basically telling us the purchasing power, the international purchasing power of a dollar. As that dollar appreciates, and you need more euros to get a dollar, guys, got what's happening? Purchasing power is increasing, but as that dollar depreciates and you need less and less euros to get a dollar, as that dollar depreciates, the international purchasing power is actually going down. Hope that video makes sense, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.